All right, so there's been a lot of questions about uh, how to sort of prepare Histo slides and um, sort of just prepare for Histolab in general. Um, so Histo is kind of new for everyone, so uh, that's definitely understandable as to why um, there'd be sort of some um, uncertainty about what, what to expect and what to go into um, uh, with as far as preparation. Um, so we're just going to clarify this in literally like five minutes in this quick, quick video. Um, so basically what you do in Histolab is um, you'll meet with your group mates in your small group. Um, you'll be in like one of the places with one of the TVs um, set up. So basically what's going to happen is that um, each of you, you're going to go around in a circle and each of you are going to present a certain number of slides, probably like five or six or seven slides uh, for every given week on whatever um, sort of histological topic you're talking about at the time. So what I'd suggest first and foremost is um, try to split up the slides with your group members. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier. I mean, like doing 30 histo slides a week is going to take forever. Uh, if you can, you know, cut it down to like seven or six, that's that's way more manageable uh, for you, like on an individual level. Uh, and then the next thing that you kind of want to do is just there's a general structure for how it's going to uh, work as far as what they expect you to put down on the slide and what to know. Uh, I guess you can read like the huge packet that they gave you or you could just watch this video and it's probably going to tell you about the same thing. Uh, and then you're just going to have to um, uh, present the slides. It's really chill. It's really like don't worry about it too much. It's just more for you to like learn and get the concepts down. Um, if you go into it stressing and worrying about like, you know, how you're going to perform or whatever like that, uh, you know, you're just not going to retain anything else your group members are going to say during their presentations because you're just so zoned out about what you're thinking about you're going to say. Uh, so don't do that because you're going to, like, really gain nothing out of Histolab. And honestly, they don't, like, um, grade you on, uh, like, performance or anything. It's just more participation. They, they literally do not grade you on performance. It's just participation. Uh, so anyways, um, having that in mind, let's go ahead and just do, like, a like two slides and then I'll show you what to sort of expect as far as that's concerned. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, slide of an esophagus. Obviously it says it up here, right, esophagus. So a couple things that you want to do whenever you're presenting is those slides is you just want to have like a general outline of what you want to say. Uh, a couple things being one, the organ. Two, the stain that is used in the particular case, which is kind of the new thing for everyone, right? Uh, three is going to be the magnification. It can just be sort of general. It doesn't really have to be too super specific or anything. Uh, four is the uh, type of cells seen in the area. Um, and then five is just like the general function of the uh, organ or whatever you're talking about and any problems that can potentially occur if they mentioned in class. So let's go ahead and look at this. What it, you know, I mean, it's it's just one, two, three, four, just straight up bullet points. So it's gonna be organ, it's gonna be esophagus. Oops, sorry about that. The staining for this is going to be hemo, uh, hema, hematoxylin and eosin. Okay, so now this is the stain that you see with most of these like purple and pink looking slides. Um, really, this is just like a very generic stain. Um, it is called an H and E stain, um, but for at least for term one, they like you to say hematoxyl and eosin, so you just kind of get used to it. I don't know. Um, it's whatever. Like, don't don't worry about it too much. Like in following terms, but for term one, use that uh, nomenclature. Um, so, anyways, the hematoxylin stain is the one that's going to stain uh, like blue or purple. Um, and that's usually going to be staining something like a nucleus uh, because, um, I guess, it's what it stains. And then uh, I believe it's, it's basophilic as well. Double check that. But um, And then the eosin stain is going to stain red or pink. Yeah, it's going to stain the cytoplasm. And generally, it's acidophilic, I believe. Uh, anyways, then next, the magnification. On this slide, the magnification is going to be low. But if we just flip forward to the next slide, obviously you can tell this is way more, you know, higher. You can see the individual cells, right? So if you can see the individual cells, it's probably going to be um, high. If not, it's going to be low. And why is this thing not letting me go back now? Shoot. 
Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. It's not letting me go back. But anyways, um, let's go from this slide then. So we already said the, uh, the organ, we said the stain, we said the magnification, and now the type of cells. So honestly, yeah, this was a good transition because the type of cells, you can probably see more in a higher magnification of the same tissue, which is why they keep giving you like multiple tissues, right? So the cells here that are going to be present here are going to be stratified squamous epithelium. That's really what they want you to say, right? They want you to say stratified squamous. So why is it stratified? Let's see each word. Why is it stratified? It's because there's a bunch of layers of it, right? One, two, three, four, five, a million, who knows? Um, and then it's going to be squamous because the cells kind of look like that, flattened, rather than, you know, columns, which would be columnar, right? So this would be squamous, and this would be columnar. But in this case, it's not columnar, it's going to be squamous, so that's what you're going to say because that is what you see here, right? The cells look exactly like that. And then the finally, uh, the last thing you want to kind of say is going to be like the function, right? So what's the function of the esophagus, right? It's to eat. So you're just going to be eating um, with this. The other thing with the esophagus is that you, you also want to say some like general um, sort of uh, characteristics about the cells. So this is for eating, obviously, and the reason why it is um, non-keratinized, which is just a general function. So any sort of like specific um, things to the tissues, not general, sorry, specific things to the tissues you want to also mention. This is going to be non-keratinized uh, And the reason why it's non-keratinized is because it is kind of like um, not as, uh, as thick and, and, uh, and usually keratinized will have like a layer of dead cells like right here, which is what you would see in the skin, but you don't see it in the esophagus. So you would want to uh, note that's something like that, right? So non-keratinized in esophagus, but usually keratinized in skin and that would be like a defining characteristic of of the two um and you basically do this for like four or five slides and literally that is it that is that is the extent of histolab and really that's all they expect you to know um you can look at the lab manual thing and try to figure out from there if you want to you can look at some other resources uh, it's really up to you i just usually just use my lecture notes and just go straight off of that but definitely split it up with your group members. Um, don't do it all on your own. It's going to be too much. Um, and don't freak out. Like, literally just go in there, do the slides, like pay attention to what everyone else in your group is saying because that's the point, right? That's like the point of History Lab is to like learn. So don't just be like freaked out and just like, you know, worry about your presentation the entire time and then not get anything out of it. All right, so hopefully that was uh, helpful. And um, yeah, if you, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them below and uh, yeah, that's it.